Introducing NASM One, NASM's ultimate membership program. Unlock access to everything your fitness career needs to succeed. Unlimited CEUs, free courses, access to our premium app, and exclusive discounts, all for $35 a month. NASM One is best in class tools, cutting edge certifications, confidence in your craft, and everything you do as a personal trainer made easy so we can achieve our greatest goals together as one. You're listening to the Peak Physique Podcast with Andre Adams on the NASM Podcast Network. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you again for tuning in to yet another episode of the Peak Physique Podcast. I'm your host, Andre Adams, NASM Master Trainer and IFBB Olympian Physique Athlete. On today's episode, we have a short and sweet one for you. This is actually a question that came in from uh, one of our followers, and I encourage you guys to continue sending me suggestions for upcoming episodes because we've got some really great topics that have been pouring in. This one today is actually on lactic acidosis and how it can affect the physique athlete. It's a term I'll say that you may or may not have heard of. I think the majority of people who exercise and work out, especially athletes, are familiar with the term lactic acid. And there's a point at which that can become toxic in the body and actually be counterproductive to your performance. So we're going to start out today, talk about what lactic acidosis condition is, what are those telltale signs and symptoms, how can we avoid it, and then most importantly, how can we remedy it to prevent it from hindering our success and you know keep our training optimal so that we're performing at our absolute best. Let's start by defining what is lactic acidosis. The actual term is defined as the buildup of excess lactic acid. It's normally an L-lactate form in the body when the body is producing more metabolic stress than the liver and kidneys are able to eradicate or uh, remove over a given period of time. And if we think about the uh, definitions, right, so blood lactate levels being above four millimoles per liter, and it's also defined as having a blood pH level below 7.35. So when you have these two conditions that coexist at the same time, that is now defined as lactic acidosis. You can further break that down into two types. There's a type A and a type B. Type A lactic acidosis condition is the production of lactic acid. And as that increases um, due to a state of, let's say, deprived oxygen, right? So an anaerobic state without oxygen. And this can be also due to more acute medical conditions uh, or intense training, right? We're going to talk a little bit more on the training side because it's often confused with things like rhabdomyolysis. Type B is more related to chronic underlying medical conditions where you've got, you know, chronic issues with kidney or liver deficiency where they're not able to keep up and remove those toxins from the bloodstream as efficiently as they should be. So you got the type A, type B, one's a little bit more closely related to uh, being in that oxygen deprived anaerobic state and maybe some acute things like some really intense training versus more, you know, long term chronic fatigue type of conditions. Point number two, it can also affect the physique athlete by causing illness. It can cause weakness, uh, obviously downtime from the gym and maybe some unwanted uh, aesthetic effects, right? So if you're training for a show and you're nearing peak week, your body's a little bit more vulnerable and recovery is lower. These are maybe times that you need to be a little bit more hypersensitive to overtraining and conditions such as lactic acidosis or a rhabdomyolysis, for instance. Uh, so definitely, you know, Educate yourselves, try to learn a little bit more about some of these topics so that you can be aware and understand that maybe I'm not feeling so good today and it's not just a coincidence. Maybe I actually have something else going on. This is where your physique coach and of course, outside of that scope, you have to look at the medical professionals when you feel like there's something else maybe going on that you need to get checked out. Symptoms, let's talk about those for a bit, for a bit here. Again, sometimes conf confused with things like rhabdomyolysis just because there's a lot of different symptoms that can overlap and they can have some commonalities there. You know, if we think about rhabdo, 
one way to, to uh, distinguish the two, rhabdomyolysis is going to be normally an excess of, you know, we'll call it exercise induced muscle damage, right? It's one of those three mechanisms of hypertrophy. And let's say you just way overdo it. Your body's not conditioned. It's not as used to that type of work capacity. Maybe you, you're coming from a sedentary position and now you're starting to train like an athlete suddenly, right? It's very possible to overtrain and accidentally give yourself rhabdo um, where you get sick. You know, you have a darkening of the urine. So it'll be like very dark yellow or brown even uh, because you've broken down so much protein enzymes from the muscle tissue that the liver kidney can't keep up and you've now hit a state of toxicity. Right. So that would be more rhabdo. Again, that can be even painful to the touch, some pain and swelling in the muscle tissues uh, versus the lactic acidosis symptoms, which would include things uh, more similar to abdominal or stomach cramps, discomfort, uh, decreased appetite. You could have some you know, irritability with um, the bowels. Right. So you could get some diarrhea, even fast, shallow breathing if it's more like of an acute onset of something like this. And it can be very um, severe. Right. So if you are experiencing those very severe conditions that don't feel like a normal, hey, I just had a really hard leg day, uh, if you feel like there's actually something wrong. That would be, a, you know, a red flag to seek medical attention, make sure there's not something more serious or any un, uh, underlying chronic conditions as well. Uh, again, when we think about any of these issues, they can be exacerbated by some of those underlying issues in the first place. So I always recommend if you're an athlete or a coach, and you're taking on a new client, or you're just starting your own journey, make sure that you are healthy enough to begin a contest prep or begin training like an athlete. If you're a coach, definitely make sure that you send them that PARQ form, you've got your health history questionnaire. And you know, the doctors are telling the, the clients that you know, hey, yes, you're healthy, you're ready to undergo training. Uh, because a lot of people don't necessarily think about, you know, if you've got a fatty liver, or you've got kidney deficiency, uh, stage one, two, three, right? There's certain issues that could prevent you from very intense training or even dietary supplementation, different things going on with the nutrition, right? So we have to make sure that we address those before we begin training. Um, other symptoms could also include, so if we take those underlying medical issues that can cause something like a lactic acidosis, uh, there's other things that could drive or exacerbate that, right? Where you get to the point it, that it gets so severe that you hit a state of sepsis or shock, right? Maybe there's some underlying liver damage. So um, again, even jaundice, right? That's another telltale sign that there could be something related to uh, that type of condition. If you guys are just joining us, welcome back to the Peak Physique Podcast. I'm your host, Andre Adams, NASM Master Trainer and IFBB Olympian Physique Athlete. We are diving into a very specialized condition to be on the look for if you ever notice any of these symptoms. But today's topic is really on lactic acidosis and how that can impact a physique athlete's performance. So we've talked about some of the symptoms. We've talked about defining what lactic acidosis is, how to distinguish it from rhabdo. Let's touch on some of the causes, right? So you guys are probably thinking by now, well, that's cool. Maybe I have experienced some of those symptoms, maybe not. But what do I need to be on the lookout for to avoid it in the first place, right? Some of the causes of lactic acidosis, we started by defining an anaerobic state, right? So without oxygen. And we have to make sure that we have developed enough work capacity as an athlete. So as your body's ramping up through that, you know, aerobic training, and we're starting to build up some capacity on the anaerobic side, now your body is going to be more well conditioned to handle a higher volume, higher work capacity, higher intensity training. And, you know, you'll be in a better position to fend off things like uh, lactic acidosis or even the rhabdo, right? If your body's more accustomed to that level of intense training. Um, another thing would be intense training without adequate recovery. Uh, and again, if you combine that with um, an underlying condition, such as maybe just a little bit deficiency in the liver and kidney, and now you, you know, you're not giving yourself the adequate recovery time and you're doing the intense training. Those are kind of the recipes that formulate something more severe, like a lactic acidosis state or condition. Um, other underlying things to be on the lookout for if you are a coach or athlete, if you have somebody with a past history of blood work issues, heart issues, pulmonary issues, 
you know, on the let's let's pause on blood work side, things that I would look for would be, um, you know, issues with hemoglobin or red blood cells or so RBC count, any of the um, like even MCT, um, any of these things that are involved in the oxygen carrying component of the blood could again, cr create that or exacerbate that anaerobic condition and then further put you at risk for something like uh, lactic acidosis. Another one that I think, you know, physique athletes are, co are constantly looking at ways to optimize glucose disposal in the body, right? Obviously, as we consume a bunch of carbs, which we need to fill out the muscles with glycogen, there, there becomes a point where we need to try and avoid the fat storage and we try to optimize glucose disposal by pushing those carbs into the muscles, right? And that comes down to insulin sensitivity. So one thing that I want to mention for you physique athletes and coaches that are using glucose disposal agents like a berberine or GDA supplement um, or the medical therapy such as like a metformin, right? Um, there is a condition that can drive lactic acidosis when there is just way too much like we'll call it overuse, an abundance of metformin in the body, this can actually cause or put you at higher risk for lactic acidosis. Um, and again, it's normally in conjunction with the deficient liver or kidney where you're not able to remove some of these excess toxins and things from the body rapidly enough. So the body, again, is producing a greater amount of lactic acid that is flooding the body and the liver and kidneys are not sufficient to remove those toxins and therefore they start to build up over a period of time. Uh, and again, like the heart problems too, keep a lookout for that, right? So if you've got some of those underlying issues, always consult and talk to your doctor before starting any intense training program, any supplementation. Uh, very important that you guys are taking care of your bodies. Things that you can do to prevent or recover faster during a prep. So these are things that as a whole, recovery is always top of mind. And if you guys are in the fitness industry, which I'm sure you are, recovery, you know, we think, think about things like the ice bath and infrared saunas, right? IR therapies, contrast therapies, soft tissue work, chiropractic, you name it. Recovery is always top of mind. So for me as the athlete, I've been a lifelong believer in if I can do things that are preventative, preventative maintenance, similar to changing the oil on my car, why would I not do that versus waiting until my engine breaks down and then it's catastrophic. So definitely take advantage of all those different tools and resources that you have available to you for recovery. Some things that you can do at home on your own would be optimizing your micronutrition, right? So taking a good pre and intra workout with beta alanine, for instance, which is a buffer to lactic acid. Now, lactic acid can actually be a good thing in the body at certain levels. When we're talking about hypertrophy, right, that's the metabolic stress. That's one component out of the three mechanisms of hypertrophy. So we want a bit of me metabolic stress in order to put the stimulus on the body and trigger a response or a super compensation. However, too much of it can be a bad thing. So beta alanine is going to buffer lactic acid, allow you to train more intensely for a longer duration of time, and also, you know, help you get back in the gym a little bit quicker. So maybe in a week, if your recovery is high, if you're trying to bring up a lagging area like the quads or the glutes, maybe now you can hit that muscle two or maybe even three times a week because your recovery is higher. Some other supplements that I really enjoy and I, I recommend um, things like creatine, right? Also going to help um, kind of buffer that lactic acid condition and allow you to convert more energy into ATP energy, produce more strength and muscular endurance, betaine for mus muscle hydration. And then some of the basics, let's start with the basics, right? The omega-3. So if you're taking a good fish oil, omega-3 fatty acid, that's going to be a great tool to help keep your body functioning and avoid uh, a lactic acidosis type of condition. And then magnesium, CoQ10, and arginine. So we're getting some blood flow and we're getting other things that are just optimizing, you know, electrolyte and our hydration balance in the body. So definitely start to incorporate some of those things especially if you notice that you're getting that kind of burning sensation, you're getting that kind of, um, you know, fatigue to the point where you feel like you might be getting a little sick at the end of your workouts. This could be a good way to maybe boost up that performance a bit. And then one thing that I make sure to program in for all of our athletes, myself included, proper warmups and cool downs. 
again, we're going back to the basics here, right? We've got all these tools that are available to us. And I think a lot of people tend to skip over things like the self myofascial release or foam rolling, right? We've got many tools to do that. We have our static and dynamic stretching. And then what I love about cardio for both warmups and cool downs, we just talked about being in an anaerobic state, potentially contributing to lactic acidosis. Well, if we warm up properly and we do about 10 to 15 minutes of light cardio, we're starting to increase the amount of oxygen saturation that's in the body, right? With more oxygen that's available um, in the bloodstream, it's going to prime those muscles up, prime your body up to help avoid some of these unwanted side effects. And then light cool down, same thing. If you've just had a really hard leg day, it's always wise to, you know, maybe do five, all, all the way up to 20 minutes of post-workout, very light cool down cardio to improve your circulation, your water balance in the body, and then help, most importantly, flush out and remove some of the toxins, such as these inorganic phosphates, lactic acid, um, you know, proteins and enzymes that have broken down from intense training. It gives your body a chance to flush those out and circulate it through the body. So definitely a great way to burn out and kind of cool down at the end of your workout. Other things that I like that I will leave you guys with, and I've been trying to incorporate more of this into my own training, infrared sauna therapy. We actually have one at our gym here in Snap Fitness Kenosha. A, it's just relaxing, right? So at the end of a really tough day, tough workout, it's good, nice little mental reset, but also you're stimulating circulation and blood flow, and it's going to help you flush some of these toxins out of the body. IV drip therapies. So you guys that are a little bit more on top of, you know, the medical research and some of the, the, the later technologies and things out here, um, medical therapies are, are definitely trending. And I highly believe in doing things like the injectable vitamins and aminos. They're more bioavailable in the body. But if we think about the IV drip, that's going intravenously directly into the body. And you can really flush out a lot more toxins. You can get your hydration, right? You can do um, some B vitamins and things like this for an energy boost. I like to mix in vitamin C, glutathione, and zinc, which is a really potent kind of triple, we call it trimunity. It's a way to uh, really boost up the immune system and keep your body functioning at its peak. Um, definitely a lot of tools that are, are available to you. And ultimately, if you condition the body over a period of time, this is part of the reason that we start building up through the NASM OPT model with that stabilization, strength, endurance, hypertrophy, all the way up through that OPT model. When you gradually increase your performance over time, your body's going to function better, you're going to feel better, and long-term, you're, you're going to perform at optimal levels and minimize the risk of things like injuries or some of these other conditions. So guys, that's really all I have for you today. I encourage you to do a deep dive, look it up sometime. Lactic acidosis, we don't want that when we're training. And if you guys got value out of this episode, I highly encourage you to share it with a friend. And I encourage you to also send me your ideas. We've got some really good topics on deck coming up for the new year. So I'm um, always excited to hear from you guys. You can drop me an email at trainingbydre at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Instagram at andreadams underscore official. And I would be happy to respond and chop it up with you guys. Guys, we will see you next time on the Peak Physique Podcast, signing off.